In this lecture, we're going to talk about the difference quotient. Remember, this is a lecture for intermediate algebra students, perhaps even trig students or pre-calculus students. Uh, even calculus students can actually benefit from this one because this is a topic that a lot of uh, textbooks do not focus upon. So the prerequisites for this section or for this lecture are going to be uh, obviously arithmetic. You need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, divide, all the fun stuff. You'll need some knowledge of what a function is and some functional ideas. And then also something that doesn't seem like it would be required, but it is the idea of a slope. We'll start by defining the difference quotient. Now given a function, uh, in this case I'll call the function f, it could be any function really, the difference quotient is defined to be f evaluated at x plus h and literally h is not given to us, it's just x plus h, minus f of x itself, and then that difference is going to be divided by h. Now there are a lot of different forms for the different quotient, difference quotient, but all of them come down to this idea. And I'd like to draw your attention to what this means uh, in terms of outputs and inputs. Now to do this, I'm going to change this notation slightly just to give you a more basic idea of what this really means. So let's pretend we have f of x plus h minus f of x. And instead of being just divided by h, let's pretend it's being divided by x plus h minus x. You would have to, do, to agree that this fraction is the same thing as the fraction up above because the only difference is that in the denominator you have x plus h minus x, but really that x and that minus x will cancel. So this is the same thing. Now what I'll do here is I'll, uh, I'll label this first group as x2 and this second x value as x1. So I just want to, this helps out with the understanding, I promise. So that's x2, and again, we're labeling that x1. If we do that, you see I have f of x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1. And if you remember your algebra, which is a prerequisite for this, if you remember your slopes of linear equations. f of x2 here is really the y value that's associated with the point x2 or the input of x2. So another way that or another term we can use to, for this f of x2 is just y sub 2. And another way we can phrase f of x sub 1 is y sub 1. It's just the y value associated with x sub 1. So really, if I wanted to rewrite this, it'd be y2 minus y1, and then denominator still x2 minus x1. And this should be very familiar to you. This is actually the slope. So this is the slope of a line. I don't want to say the line, but it's the slope of a line connecting x1 comma y1 and x2 comma y2. That's a very important way to kind of think of this definition. It's really just giving us a slope of a line connecting a couple points. One point happens to be at x itself. That's uh, this that's represented right here. Okay, One point happens to be at x comma f of x. The other point happens to be wiggled slightly away from x by a value of h. And then as you can see the notation right down here, that's what I'm saying. You have an input x, you have your output f of x. And the other point has an input x plus h and the output f evaluated at that x plus h. So this is just a very important way that you can think of the difference quotient. Obviously, uh, in the denominator when you have x plus h minus x, the x is canceled. That's why the format for the difference quotient doesn't have any x's in the denominator. So let's, before we go even further into, into the understanding of, or the conceptual understanding of this, let's do a little bit of a calculation here just to calculate the difference quotient for a fun function. Let's go ahead and calculate the difference quotient for the function f of x equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. Remember again, the difference quotient is just 
f of x plus a little bit of a wiggle minus f evaluated at x. So this is our second x value point and this is our first x value point. All being divided by h. And remember again you could if you if you just forget this formula easily you could you could just match it up like it's a slope right f evaluated at some point minus f evaluated at another point divided by the first point minus the second point there you go so that is actually f of x plus h minus f of x all over h well let's go ahead and figure out what f of x plus h is so this is kind of as an aside and so maybe I'll notate that right here this is an aside f of x plus h means, well, wherever I see an x in this function, so let me write parentheses wherever I see an, wherever I see an x, wherever I do see an x, I'm going to replace it with an x plus h. And I know that squaring this binomial here will give me x squared plus 2 x h or h x actually plus h squared this will give me a positive 4 x plus 4 h plus 5 and again distributing the negative there doing this all properly remember PEMDAS you take care of inside of parentheses first if you can and then worry about the distribution we have negative x squared minus 2 h x minus h squared plus 4 x plus 4 h plus 5 and does anything combine nothing really combines there are no like terms so that's a bit of a mess but what are you going to do so what I'll do is I'll write that up in this numerator here we have a negative x squared minus 2 h x minus h squared plus 4x plus 4h plus 5. And from this we're going to lose f of x. Don't forget that. It's very easy to forget. I think a lot of people tend to do that. They think, oh great, I've done a lot of work so I don't have to worry about f of x anymore or they just kind of forget about it. The fact is this chunk right here is just f of x plus h and of course we're losing this f of x. I'll bridge this gap here by swinging this on down here. This equals. Uh, I got a negative x squared minus 2hx minus h squared plus 4x plus 4h plus 5 plus x squared minus 4x minus 5. That was me distributing that negative uh, in that last little bit. Now we're going to combine like terms in the numerator. I have a negative x squared and a positive x squared, so those two cancel out. I'll just highlight those so you see the ones that, can are, that are going to cancel out. Uh, I have a positive 4x and I have a negative 4x, so those cancel out. I have a positive 5 and a negative 5, so those will cancel out as well. So what I'm left with is a negative 2hx minus h squared plus 4h, all being divided by h. To be proper with my algebra, I'm just going to say each of those terms in the numerator have an h in common, so I can factor an h out. I'll be left with a negative 2x minus h plus 4 all over h and now you can cancel like factors right so this will turn into a negative 2x minus h plus 4 that is the difference quotient it seems like a lot of work but actually it's just a lot of busy work and al algebra busy work and it comes out to a decently nice answer. Now your answer should usually have, uh, or maybe I shouldn't say should usually have, your answers may have X's or H's or both. Okay, It also might not have an H. It might not have an X. So that's just something to note. Um, but it's nothing wrong if you have X's and H's in your answers here. Now let's actually interpret the meaning 
of this. If this is the slope, if this represents, um, maybe I should note that here, this is the slope because it, the difference quotient, as we mentioned earlier, is just a slope between x and x plus h. So between x comma f of x and x plus h comma f of x plus h. So what if we were to maybe look at a specific value of x here? Like for example a negative uh, one half. So for f of x being the same function, let's go ahead and determine the slope, slope of the line connecting x equals negative one y one half y equals f of negative one half and a point a little bit away from that okay say by an amount h so in other words some point x plus h and of course the y value will be f of x plus h now if we already know quite a bit about or you should at least know quite a bit about functions and graphs and stuff like that so you should know that this is going to be a parabola when you graph this out but I'm not asking you you know um, you can't find the slope of a parabola that doesn't work you can only find slopes of lines so I'm asking you specifically to find the slope of a line connecting two points that are on that parabola and you had just found out that the difference quotient f of x plus h minus f of x all over h ended up being negative 2x minus h plus 4. Now if I want you to calculate the slope uh, between these two points it's given by this expression right here. So let's go ahead and figure it out. When x is uh, negative one half, we get the following. The slope is uh, negative two times a negative one half minus h plus four. Or in other words, let's see one plus four. That's five minus h. The slope is five minus h. So. The idea is if we wiggle a little bit away, let's say we wiggle away by one. So if h is equal to one, that is if we're looking at the points negative one half and its y value, f of negative one half. And the other point we let be just one away from that, which would be positive one half and f of one half. Then the slope would be uh, the slope of the line connecting those two points should be 5 minus 1 or 4. Now to illustrate this let's go ahead and bring up a visual and this visualization is brought to you by uh, Wolfram Alpha or actually the demonstrations project at Wolfram uh, it's a Mathematica demonstration project. This is a graph, actually. The green graph here is a graph of negative x squared plus 4x plus 5. And notice that the point that I have for x, they call it x naught here, but it's x, is a negative 1 half. And I've let my delta x, which in our case we're just going to call h, okay? We're going to let h, which is our wiggle, this h is just going to be a distance of 1. That means the slope of the line connecting these two points is 4. And look, it even says 4. Now I can make h bigger. Let's make h uh, all the way out to, I don't know if I could do an h of 2 on this thing easily. Oh, I probably could actually. Let me go ahead and do this. Uh, let's go ahead and make it an h value of um, 4. There's an h value of 4. So in other words, uh, my anchor point that I'm considering, the point that I'm starting with is x equals negative 1 half. And I'm saying, what's the slope of the line connecting that x negative 1 half f of x, f of negative 1 half, to the point, uh, let's see, 4 units away, which would be uh, 3 and a half, comma f of 3 and a half. 
and this tells me the slope of this line should be 1. Let's actually go back to our mathematics here and just see what happens. So um, in this case, again, let's just ask ourselves if, uh, so we know that the slope of the line should be negative 2x minus h plus 4. And because our x value that we're kind of letting uh, be our anchor is a negative 1 half, so this is all kind of just staying the same. Nothing's really changed here. So we still have a 5 minus h. Oops, 5 minus h. And if we let our h wiggle be 4 units away, we see that the slope connecting those two points should be the number 1. And as we saw back here, it is. You can see it right there. Okay. Of course, we don't have to have our anchor point at x equals a negative one half. I just said, well, suppose we're interested in x equals negative one half. But notice what happens is h gets really, really small. So h right now is about two, a little over two. Now it's a little under two, approaching the number one, and so on and so forth. Look what happens to the slope of that line. It starts becoming almost like, um, well, what we call this is tangent. We call this tangent to the parabola. So it's almost becoming tangent to the parabola. There is an issue, by the way, if you let x the the h value be 0. Notice it says the slope is undefined. Well, <laughs> that's because if h is 0, then right here we would be dividing by 0. So we have to have a little bit of wiggle to have two points. Uh, so h has to be like maybe 1 one hundredth or something like that. But as long as we have a little bit of wiggle we don't have to worry about dividing by zero. Anyhow, that is the idea of a difference quotient. Specifically it's actually not too bad to calculate, it's just f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Um, and really one example is, is all it usually takes to suffice to uh, understand it. But I want to go a little bit further and have you really understand the concept of, uh, of the difference quotient. It's essentially the slope of these lines at for every given value of h and every given value of x. Okay, So I'm changing the x values and I'm changing the h values. And you can see there's all different slopes happening. So swallow that. That's the basis, by the way, of the first year calculus course, which is called differential calculus.